Hey gang, we're on to part two of the night by night solo today. Um, hope you've had a blast learning the first part. I love that, just that fast run. <laughs> I've played it a million times over the last couple of weeks and I'm, I'm just really enjoying playing it. Uh, I, you, you know, I need to start recording again so that I can use it on a solo <laughs> or something like that anyways. But um, yeah, warm those fingers up again because um, we're gonna go into part two of the solo. Um, again, we're gonna, you know, go over it in fine detail and there are some, you know, fast runs in this part as well. There's some, um, uh, runs in this which are, which are actually alternate picked, which I know George does it, but a lot of his playing is quite legato, so um, it kind of, it's a slight departure from his usual kind of, you know, techniques and stuff, which is wonderful. Um, and, you know, it's been fun doing that. And you know what? I've been using these little, uh, let's see if you can see them, there are the, the Dunlop Jazz Picks. I usually use a, in, you know, re regular shaped pick, but one of my students um, bought some of these and you know didn't agree with them, so he uh, gave them to me. They're awesome. <laughs> They're just absolutely amazing, and I can pick really quick with them and very very accurately. So I kind of switched over to using these for the time being. So uh, that's uh, you know helping with my pick accuracy and stuff when I'm doing these fast picking runs, which um, you know just I'm just not used to doing because um, I do a lot of hammer on and pull off work. All right, so we're gonna. Um, see the playthrough first which I did upstairs in the loft uh, last week um, so I'm going to show you that first and then we'll be back down here in the studio so I can show you all the juicy little secrets about how to play the second part of this art. All right let's go see the playthrough and then we'll be back in a second. See you in a minute. Okay, so there's a playthrough again, uh, which I must have watched, I don't know, a few hundred times already myself. <laughs> um, I just love this song. Uh, what can I say? Uh, all right, so we're going to do part two of the solo. Um, so part two of the solo starts off uh, with this phrase. I'll do a playthrough first and then I'll break it down for you. So that's going to be our first phrase. So what I'm doing is initially I'm, I'm beginning on this um, 17th fret of the high E string. I'm doing full step bend there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the 14th fret. So I use my pinky to do the um, 17th fret, but you can use your third finger if that's easier. Uh, whatever works for your fingers. What I tend to find is that when you actually do bends with different fingers, um, the uh, bend actually sounds slightly different according to which finger you're using. I remember seeing um, an interview with Slash where he was explaining the same thing. Um, he was saying sometimes he does the bend with his third finger, sometimes second, because it actually gives a slightly different kind of, uh, I guess the curve in the bend is slightly different. So, you know, try with your pinky. You, you know, you, um, you can build up the speed and, you, you know, it, the bend will sound a tiny bit different from if you use your third finger. So full step bend here, 17th fret E. Then I'm going to come back to the 14 and I'm going to do the 14th fret of the E, 17 and then the 16 on the E. 
Now when I get to this 16, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bend it up a very, very, very tiny bit. So it'll be like this. So it's like a quarter step bend. Now, um, basically the reason I do that is because when I was listening to the solo and learning it, I kind of noticed that it almost sounds like George was kind of contemplating doing a bend there or something. Um, you know, something like, something like that, but kind of stopped in between and then did this little trilly thing afterwards. <laughs> and I just thought it was really important um, in terms of, you know, getting the, the whole kind of feel of the song. And if you want to get the solo completely accurate, then to, to actually include that in there. So I'll do the 14, 17, 16, and I'm going to bend up a quarter step. Now from here, holding the bend, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a hammer on pull off thing. So I'm going to hammer on, I'm going to pick the note at the 16 again, hammer on to 17, pull off to 16 and pull off to 14. Um, so slowly, uh, let me try and do it slowly here. Kind of almost worked there. <laughs> One more time. And then from there, when I'm on the 14th fret of the E, I'm going to come up to the, the 17th fret of the B string, pick it twice and put a vibrato on that note. So it's in entirety, um, in, in its entirety, it will sound like this. So some very, very subtle things happening there. Um, and this little bend on this 16, it actually gives us that, that slur, which I've spoken about in previous Lynch Licks, where George holds the first note a little bit longer than the, the rest of the notes that he's hammering and uh, hammering onto and pulling off to. All right, so from there, we're gonna come up to the 19th fret of the E string. I'm gonna do a one and a half step bend on this note now. It's a nice big, big, big bend. <laughs> and that's all it does. It's just a, literally, it's just a big bend. And it might actually be two steps, let's see. Uh, no, it's one and a half steps. It's definitely one and a half steps. So I'm basically kind of bending up to the same note as on the 22nd fret. Now, when I do these really big bends, there's a couple things I do with my hand to make it easier to, to actually do the bend. Uh, first thing I do is my my um, my thumb is over the neck like this. Uh, all of my other fingers uh, that are free underneath the finger that I'm bending with, I'm bending with my pinky. So my second, third, and, um, um, sorry, my first, second, and third fingers are all supporting the bend. So they're all bending the string up with the pinky as well. And this this makes it much much easier rather than just trying to bend up with a single finger or even two fingers. The other little thing that I do is I tend to kind of um, dig my forearm into the forearm rest of the guitar. And this basically just stabilizes the guitar so I can hold it in place while I'm doing the bend. So especially the big bend, it just makes it a little bit easier to control them. Okay, from there, I'm going to come back to the B string. I'm going to play the 15, 17, then... I'm going to do a full step bend on the 17. And at the top of the bend, I'm going to stop the note. So it will be 15, 17, bend on the 17, and then kill the note. From there, I'm going to come back to the 15th fret. Now I'm going to pick this note and I'm going to do a very slow bend up, um, but it's only going to be a half step bend. Now, when I get up to that half step, I'm going to start doing vibrato on that note. So when I add that all together, we'll get this. Right, from there, um, we're going to go on to a fast picking bit. So um, I'm going to just recap what I've done and then show you that next bit. So this is where we are so far.
All right, now we're going to go on to this uh, nice little quick run, um, which George does um, from the 16th fret of the B string. I'm going to do the 16, 17, 19 on the B. <laughs> then on the E string, I'm going to do 16 and 17. And then I'm going to come back on myself. So I'll be doing the 19, 17, 16 on the, the B string. And then I'm going to come up to the 19 on the G string as well. So slowly, um, it's going to be like this. Um, now, when I get to the E string, I'm actually doing a hammer on pull off, and but I'm then picking all of the notes back up to the 19 on the um, uh, on the G string, and I'm going to play this twice. Now, um, this phrase is worth learning slowly so that your fingers know exactly what they're doing because it is a fast phrase in the solo. And getting the picking accuracy um, synchronized with your fret hand can be a little bit tricky. Um, so, you know, just work on it slowly and when it's, you know, when you're ready to up the speed, your hands will naturally kind of go faster, but with the accuracy as well. All right, so I'm gonna do that twice. And then what I'm going to do is this. So what I did there was once I was back at this 19th row of the G string, I'm going to pick at the 19 and pull off to 16. And then I'm going to come up to the 19 on the E string again and do that one and a half step bend again. I'm going to follow up with this phrase. So it's a chromatic thing that I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing the 17, 18, 19 on the B. Uh, then going to the 17 on the E string. Then I'm going to come back on myself. So I'm going to do 19, 18, 17 on the B. So our first move is just going to be that little rotation there. So once I'm back at this 17, I'm going to come to the 19 on the E string. And then I'm going to come to the 20 on the B string and do a full step bend up and some vibrato. So you can treat this like two little separate phrases. First you have that little rotation, and then the last two notes, the 19 on the E, 20 on the B. Right, from there we're going to do this phrase. So just a very, very simple scalar descend. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm starting on the 17th fret of the E string. Um, I'm doing the 17, 16 and 14 on the E. And then I'm doing 17, 15, 14 on the B string. And I, I'm going to play that twice and I'm going to alternate pick all of the notes. And this is going to take us into the final uh, fast phrase um, of the solo. So the fast phrase is going to go like this. I'm going to play it slowly. So it's a four note descend that I'm doing from the 22nd fret of the E string. So the first four notes are going to be the 22nd, 21st and the 19th fret of the uh, E string. And then I'm going to slide down to the 17 on the E. And I'm going to pick all of the notes here. Then the second phrase is going to be 19, sorry, the 21, 19, 17, um, and then the 16 on the E. The third phrase will be um, 19, 17, 16, 14 on the E. 
And once I'm here, I'm going to start descending the strings as well. So I'm going to do four notes from here, um, which will be the 17, 16, 14 on the E, and the 17 on the B string. Then the next four will be uh, 16, 14 on the E string, and 15, sorry, 17, 15 on the B string. I'm going to follow that with the 14th fret of the E string and 17, 15, 14 on the B. And then the final run of four is going to be on the B string and the G string. So I'm going to um, do 17, 15, 14 on the B and then the 16 on the G. Now when I get here, I basically um, pull off the 14 and then do a couple more hammer-on pull-offs um, uh, between the 14 and the 16 on the, um, on the G string. And then from here I'm going to slide down to the, um, the 11th fret of the, uh, the G string. The reason I'm showing it like this is because when I watched um, the playthrough that I'd done back, that's what I was doing. That's what my fingers were doing. They were doing this descent. Down to this um, uh, 11th fret on the G string. Now from the 11th fret of the G, we're going to be doing... Um, a harmonized phrase so I'm going to show you both parts first I'll show you the higher part and then I'll show you the uh, the lower part the higher part basically plays like this so nice simple run there it's not fast just lots and lots of uh, emphasis on the vibrato points here. So I'm going to start on the 11th fret of the G string, pick it and put lots of vibrato on it. Then I'm going to do 11, 12 on the, um, on the G string and 11, 12, 14 on the B string. And I'm going to slide into this 14 rather than playing with my other finger. And when I get there, I'm going to pick it again and put lots of nice wide vibrato on that note again. So one more time with that. After that, I'm going to um, do the 14th fret of the G, sorry, the B, 15 on the B, um, the 16 on the, the G string and then back to the 14 on the B. Now on the video you'll actually see me playing it slightly different. I actually did this. So I did 14, 15 on the B string, 12 on the B and then back to 14 and then I used the bar to uh, do the vibrato there. And it was just something that I did when I was playing, you know, um, uh, it sounded fine. <laughs> it's just a different way of playing the same phrase, I guess. Um, now the last part of the phrase is gonna be on the uh, E string and the B string, and I'm gonna switch over to playing from the sixth fret of the E string. So I'm gonna play the uh, six and seven on the E string, the 8 on the B string and then back to 6 on the E string. So it's basically, you know, the same technique we use here. It's essentially the same thing, just in a different position on the neck. And to end the solo, we have a tapping run, which goes like this. So what I'm doing there is I'm um, actually playing from the third fret of the B string. Uh, now in order to actually 
uh, get this note rather than actually just blindly hammering on with my first finger I use a technique which George calls a silent tap um, so basically all he's doing is um, I've got my finger on the third fret of the uh, B string um, I'm going to put my uh, second finger um, on my pick hand where I'm going to be tapping which is going to be the 10th fret of the um, of the B string and what I'm going to do is rather than tapping I'm basically just going to put my my finger under the string and then I'm just going to pick it with my finger so I'm just picking upwards and that's basically going to sound the first note so um, I'm going to hammer on from this third fret to this the five and the seven on the B and then I'm going to tap at 10 and then I'm going to come back on myself and when I get back here I'm, I'm basically going to do a second one as well so I'm not going to um, silent tap again I'm just going to carry it on Now once I'm back at the three the second time, I'm going to slide over to five and I'm going to do the same thing um, from the fifth fret. So this time I'll do the five, seven, nine on the B with my uh, fret hand and I'm going to be tapping at the twelve. And then the final note is going to be on the high E string, so the tenth fret. Um, I'm basically going to pick it, try and put a nice big juicy pinch harmonic on it. Oops. I'm going to dive down. I'm going to basically dive the bar as far as I can. <laughs> and that's going to end the solo. Okay, so there's a harmonized part under um, uh, that last part of the solo, which actually goes like this. Now obviously when you're playing all by yourself, you're not going to be able to do both parts simultaneously, but it's interesting to know how both of these parts uh, work and how they interact with each other. So this time I'm going to slide into the 8th fret of the D string, and I'm going to be playing across the D string and the G string only uh, for the first part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide into this 8th uh, fret of the D and put lots of vibrato on it. Then I'm going to play the 8-9 on the D, and then I'm going to come to the G string and play 6-7. I'm going to slide into the 9th fret of the uh, D, and then I'm going to pick it again and put lots of vibrato on it. Now I'm going to switch over. So my first finger is on the um, 9th fret of the D string, sorry, the G string. And I'm going to play the 9, uh, 11 on the, um, the G, come back to 7 on the G, and then I'm going to return to the 9 on the G. So it'll be 9, 11, 7, 9. And then the final few notes, um, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the 11 on the, um, the G, G string here. I'm going to go up to the twelfth fret uh, of the G, then come back to nine, and then return to the eleven on the uh, the G. And that's going to take us into our tapping run, um, which again is going to be on the D string. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the fourth fret of the D. So I'm going to do f uh, a hammer on from fourth fret to the fifth and the seventh on the D. Again, I'm going to use my silent tap. Now I'm going to be doing the tap at the, the um, ninth fret of the, the D. So I'm going to tap, do the silent tap from there um, to the fourth fret, hammer on to five and seven. So again, playing it twice. Then I'm going to slide my first finger up to the sixth fret of the D and then do the same basically the same fingering same kind of intervals so this time it'll be six seven nine on the uh, D string hammering on with my with my um, fret hand and then tapping at the 11 on the D 
And that will be the end of that phrase. We're not going to do a dive uh, on any other notes there. So when I add that together, we'll get this. <laughs> Now both times when I was um, sliding into the second position because there was a note already playing here on the, the, uh, the final fret that I returned to, I basically just used the slide to sound the next note. So I'm not doing the silent pick the second time. And there you go, that's the second part of the solo. Uh, I'm going to play through a couple times for you slowly and then we'll um, see the playthrough again. So um, here it is slowly. And one more time slowly, and this time I'll do the second harmony part so that um, you can see how that fits into the solo. And there you go, there's the whole of the solo for Night by Night. Um, be sure to check out part one if you haven't done so already um, and um, learn that as well. All right, let's go and see the playthrough. Here we go. And there you go, Rich. Um, hope that told you everything you needed to know about Night by Night, the rhythm, the solo part one and solo part two. Uh, just a lovely song. Thank you for the recommendation because it did challenge me and it took me back to my playing from many, many years ago, which uh, which has been just awesome as I 
as I keep saying. <laughs> You've probably heard me say it a few times now. <laughs> but I really do enjoy playing this uh, this style of Dokken. Uh, next week we're going to get onto another Dokken song. Now I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. You're just going to have to tune in next Thursday to see what it is or um, check it out on my Facebook or whatever. Um, but it is a cool one. We've got some really great tracks coming up and some surprises as well. Um, I've had some suggestions which are kind of the George Lynch stuff, but they're slightly kind of off grid. It's not what you'll be expecting. It won't be a Dokken or Lynch Mob song, uh, but it will from be from the Dokken era of George. Mmm, intriguing, ha! Huh? You, know, you can ponder on that for the next couple of weeks, and um, hopefully the person who made the suggestion won't give it away on Facebook or anything. <laughs> um, so that'll be coming up in a few weeks' time. Uh, so do tune in next week to see which um, song that we're going to be uh, switching to or, or going on to, I should say. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments box below or you can reach me at my websites jpalmer.com or brightonguitarguru.co.uk also on Facebook, um, Google Plus and Twitter. And there's some really cool discussions and stuff going on on Facebook so do head over there and join the page and stuff and as always if you're not already subscribed click the link up here somewhere and um, subscribe to the channel so you get all of the updates as I post them. have a wonderful wonderful week guys and I shall see you next time <laughs>